God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Saying together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Let into the thoughts of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you. And worthy of your holy name, through the Christ of our Lord. Amen. Continuing, glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Glory to God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God. Receive our 
and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Persevere the works, preserve the works of your mercy, that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith. In the confession of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Good morning. Welcome to St. Timothy's. Before our first reading, I just wanted to let you know we have a shortened service of the word this morning so that we, the team from that College for Congregational Development, has a little bit more time to give you their survey results. We haven't skipped any of the music. It's a little more important to me. So you can look up the rest of the lectionary sometime this week if you're interested, but thank you. We will continue on with the psalm for this morning. The psalm is Psalm 91, and we'll be saying verses 9 through 16. And let us read it responsibly by the whole verse. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. You shall tread upon the lion and adder. You shall trample the young lion and the serpent under your feet. But it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. Standing, let us pray. Dear God, take our minds and think through them, take our lips and speak through them, and take our hearts and set them on fire for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Please be seated. James and John, sometimes called the sons of thunder, two brothers wanting to be special and have special attention, wanting to be great, probably competed most of their life. They think they're coming up with a collaborative solution <laughs> by asking Jesus to sit one on his right and one on his left and so Jesus teaches them about glory and about greatness. To be great, you must be servant of all. Jesus came to serve and to be a ransom for many. St. Timothy's faith community and the church gives a plethora 
of opportunities for you to serve, for you to enact your greatness by serving, for you to enact your love for God, your love for each other, and your love of yourself. So we're going to talk about those opportunities to serve and the survey results. Thank you, Kelly and Judy Wade. So thanks for coming down, Kelly. Yeah, that was it. That was his name. <laughs> <laughs> and Mary Ann, thank you for being here, Ken. Everybody, good morning. Good morning. Um, so first of all, you should have had the survey results sort of stuck into your bulletin this morning. Um, if you did not grab a bulletin or if for some reason you don't have one, um, please indicate so and we'll try to bring one to you. There are no more bulletins. Oh, there are no more. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, we do have more copies of the survey though. So, okay. Thank you, Chuck. I appreciate it. So um, first of all, before I kind of get into the survey results and, and walk through them with you a bit, um, I just want to thank those of you that participated for those four weeks as we asked questions um, during the service and for allowing us to um, ask you for some heartfelt responses. I mean, truly did get heartfelt responses and it's obvious that our congregation cares very deeply for St. Timothy. So before we get into it, thank you for your willing participation in this. That was very meaningful to our team. Um, so looking at question one, because there were four questions and it is two-sided, so make sure you're on the right side. With each question, um, we did list how many responses we got. So that means the number of post-its that we received plus um, any responses that I received via email. So for question one, we received 34 responses. It was a pretty good one. And it was a two-part question. So the very first box is the first part of the question. Are you aware of the volunteer ministries at St. Timothy's? And um, 25 of you said yes, and nine people said no, not really. And then from there, it was divided into two other sets of data. So for those who said yes, those 25 folks, that's where we get that first sort of pie chart there to the left. So if they said yes, then we wanted to know how they heard about the volunteer ministries. And I know that those labels are kind of tiny, the print is pretty small because we were trying to get everything onto one page. So I'll read through them very quickly. The dark blue section is for personal requests or conversation. That's how people heard about it. The uh, dark orange is from a bulletin or a leaflet. The light yellow or mustard yellow is in service announcements during the actual service. Um, the green section is via the email um, that gets sent out weekly. And then the light orange was just from being involved in various um, volunteer ministries already and hearing about other opportunities for serving on vestry. And then finally, there was an other category, um, which those were single responses that we didn't put in here. And then for the other side, so for those who said no, they weren't aware of ministries, we wanted to know how we can help them learn more. And what I found kind of interesting is that some of these categories actually match. Um, so on that right side, um, the dark blue category is, again, personal requests or conversations. Um, they thought it would be helpful to be personally invited to serve. Um, the dark orange is from a bulletin or a leaflet. Um, they thought that there could be more announcements put into those. Um, the light yellow in service announcements, they thought more of those could be done. Um, green said email, and then that light orange was other, and again, that was kind of a large category, but there were a lot of one-off things that were in there as well. So that was question one. Um, one thing to keep in mind, too, is that some folks that answered provided more than one response. Um, so someone who said they were aware of volunteer ministries might have said, oh, I've heard about them in the bulletin, and also Reverend Rebecca invited me to do something. So just a heads up, um, those numbers are, are not necessarily just one response for one person. It, it could be multiple for a person. And then also one thing to note is when they talk about bulletin or leaflet um, in that part B, so helping people learn more,
more. One of the things that came up a couple of times is that um, folks were requesting a new document, so something brand new that would list the volunteer opportunities or provide more information, um, essentially something that does not yet exist, so maybe not necessarily our current bulletin or our current information that we have. Yeah. All right, question two. So this one we had fewer responses, um, 22, and um, it, it asked, do you participate in volunteer ministries? And if yes, what are you involved in and what are the needs? And if you're not, then what would be preventing you from volunteering? So on that left side, um, I kind of tried to boil down the answers that I got. And what I found was that there were kind of two main themes. So those who said they were participating in ministries, when they said what their ministries needed, it was either more people, so more volunteers, or it was just the, the need or the desire to actually recommence after COVID and the lockdowns and whatnot. So those are listed there. And you'll see we had eight different um, volunteer ministries listed. that they really could use more people. And that's directly from people who are in those ministries currently. And then there were three listed at the time that needed to recommence. We have since brought back coffee hour, but at the time of the survey, it wasn't bad yet. Yeah. And then on the right, sort of in that um, cloud shape, <laughs> um, those who said that they were not in a volunteer ministry currently um, there were eight responses there, and I didn't list every one of them um, due to space, but um, you can read through there. A lot of it had to deal with um, being busy or not being sure where there was a need. And one of the responses um, that was not written out here did indicate, well, it would be really nice if there was a document out there that listed all of the volunteer ministries, what their needs are, what the time commitments are, um, and those kinds of things. So again, I didn't print that here because it was a very long response, but that kind of popped up in both the first question and the second question. Okay. Um, go ahead and with me, turn on over. Okay. So for question three, um, the question is written there for, for you to look at, but what are the current needs of volunteer ministries? And this was a very general question, so it didn't have to be a ministry that you personally were involved in. We just wanted to know, in general, what do you think is necessary or needed for our volunteer ministries here at St. Tim's? Um, and so you'll see it's, it's sort of drawn out as a bar graph. And very much like the first question, if you are a math nerd like me and you go through and you add up all the numbers on the bar graph, um, it might not match that 24 responses number. Okay? And if that bothers you, I'm sorry. <laughs> but the reason for that is because, again, some folks put more than one thing. So um, that's why the numbers don't entirely match there. Um, but you'll kind of notice that the one that got the most um, uh, mentions was, again, more volunteers, just needing more people to um, come in and, and work for each of the volunteer ministries. And then the next two were um, people having a desire to seek the food pantry back. And then that more clarity one. And if you're not sure exactly what that means, the more clarity category was, um, Essentially, if folks mentioned that they wanted better definitions for volunteer ministry roles, um, a printout with volunteer ministry roles, um, clearer documents that have that information about what the uh, time commitment would be for each thing. So again, that got mentioned in question one, in question two, and in question three. So that's what that more clarity means, just extra information or additional information that makes it very obvious what the needs are at St. Tim's. Um, other categories that were a little bit smaller were just wanting new members, um, you know, wanting to see new faces in the building, um, working on the youth groups that we play as well as something for the teenagers, um, new ideas just in general. So these included things like new programs or new committees, um, ideas for, for things that we haven't tried before, and then just working around COVID. Um, people indicated that there was a need to, to try to figure out how to do some of our ministries in this new world that we're in um, post-COVID. All right, and then finally question four. This is the last one. We got 21 responses, and one of the things that the CCD team thought was really interesting and we wanted to put on here as a note was that that day we had an attendance of 54 um, in the church, and we also had nine remote um, observers to be uh, to the service that day and we got only 21 responses. And so we're not bringing this up as a criticism necessarily, but we were just curious as to um, 
you know, why that might have been, um, what might have prevented responses. So just something to be aware of and that we wanted to share with you. Um, looking at the question, it says, where is the spirit calling you? And so what we did was that pie chart that's there, anything that got more than one response, we put into the pie chart so that you could kind of compare um, how much of that pie it was taking. But there were quite a few things that got mentioned just as one-offs or single mentions, and those are in that gray circle that's there. So you can read through those. Um, the main things that, that people indicated were trying to be part of a hospitality or welcoming team, doing social events was also part of that, um, doing reading um, in the service, helping with godly play. Um, really, a lot of folks wanting to see the food pantry back or wanting to help with the food pantry. Um, and then that red category that's up there near the top, um, I know it's cut off a little bit, but that was that people are just unable to currently volunteer. So the Spirit is calling them to rest and to take a step back at the moment. As well as fire, property, and counting, those are also there as well. Um, and then there's that whole list of single mentions there as well, all good volunteer ministries. One thing that the CCD came to, CCD team came together to discuss after we collected these results was, okay, so we have a long list of things that were mentioned, but what wasn't mentioned? And so that's that cloud shape there at the bottom. We wanted to make folks aware that we had a lot of really great responses on question four, but there are quite a few volunteer ministries that either folks sort of forgot to mention or maybe they're just not aware that those opportunities are out there. And, and so maybe as a congregation or as a team, we need to help make folks more aware of those. So we went ahead and listed some of the things that we brainstormed and thought of that weren't mentioned by anyone in the survey responses there. So things including lay Eucharistic visitors, um, diocesan convention, um, the delegates that we need and alternates that we need for that, um, a newcomer welcoming committee, so specifically for, for fresh faces that come to join us. Um, now that we're doing live streams, help with that as well. Um, that was not mentioned. So just something to consider um, and for you guys to kind of look through and, and think about. Um, so that's basically the survey results. Um, at this point, you know, these are yours to keep, so hang on to them, look at them as much um, or as little as you like. Um, I want to give a thank you to the CCD team. So Judy, Marion, and Rebecca, thank you guys so much for working with me on this. Yeah. And I would like to address um, our, our online folks that are joining us. Um, I know that you do not have a copy of this, but if anyone is joining us online and would like to have this in PDF format, or even if you're here today and you'd like to see the digital copy for whatever reason, um, just let me know. You can send me an email um, or reach out to me at knixon1989 at gmail.com. Um, and then finally, the last thing that I will say, and then we will continue on, is that um, at coffee hour today, we invite you to join us um, for just a very brief reflection about these results. Um, we would just love to hear sort of your um, feedback on what you've just seen and what we've just gone over. And also, it's a great opportunity to have some follow-up questions as well. Um, so please, it's not required. You don't have to come if you don't want to, but we would love to have you um, to go over this just a little Thank you. Yeah. This is our fall. This is our uh, the College for Congregational Development's fall project. There is a spring project, so obviously we will be following up on these results. Um, and yes, we want to make available. What does an usher do, and how often do you have to do it, and how many hours is it going to take, and all that. And so we will have more ministry role definitions, time commitments. We'll be developing those next. So let us stand and say together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternal God the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the God of God, 
but one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was a man. For our sake, he was crucified in Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. And for the only one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. And that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. That thy perpetual shine on them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May they also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. I pray for my brother Kevin. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We are thrilled that you are here, and saints, we gather today on the traditional land of the Miami people. We ask you to turn your phones to airplane mode, and as an act of love for those who are worshiping with us online, it will help make sure that our live streaming is not interrupted. So thanks for doing that with your phones. I am thrilled that you are here this morning. We also acknowledge those worshiping with us online. St. Timothy's has three upcoming, I would say meaningful Sundays. On October 31st, yes, it is Halloween, and we're going to talk about All Hallows Eve, All Saints Day, and All Souls Day, the Fall Tridium. Maybe you didn't know about it. So we're going to invite our children to wear their costumes and be in the processional so that we get to see them either be their heroes or shadow side or whatever they come as, which is always a joy. Then on November 7th, 
we will celebrate the altar of remembrance. So we're going to invite you to remember those who have passed, especially this past year, and come and light a candle in a solemn ceremony. The next Sunday, as you know, we have a tradition of Saint Pat Saint Timothy's of honoring our veterans. So we will be singing our national hymns and processing our flags and honoring those who have is serving our country and who have served and their families. Lastly, I want to thank Debbie and Thomas again for playing for us this morning. Thank you for being here with us. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God. that whoever you are and wherever you are on your faith journey, you are welcome to come and feast with us at God's table. On page five, there are some brief instructions about how we do communion, but know that everyone is welcome. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of inner stellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation. But we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he us. By his wounds, we are And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn, saying together, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
So, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take Eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. We come to celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the days of time. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your Church, gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God.
you. Let's get those kids in here and get them communed. <laughs> I love being fully human. You <laughs> love being fully human? Yeah. 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 Or if you want to come up for communion, we'd be happy to host you. I say all the time. God is good. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as the members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have us a spiritual food in the sacrament of the Father. Send us now. Friends, remember that life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel this way with us. So be swift to love. So be swift to love and to forgive, and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you and keep you this day and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.